Hello everyone and welcome back to the Skilling Open. We are in the knockouts and this is the second uh, match of the semi-finals. Yanni Pomichi versus Magnus Carlsen. Magnus defeated Yanni yesterday uh, by winning one game. We've uh, shown that one and the other three games ended in a draw. So now uh, Nepo needs uh, at least one win and uh, for example three draws to force playoffs against Magnus uh, and maybe uh, you know he head to the finals of this uh, very nice tournament. So without further ado let's just check out the game. The game just ended but I thought uh, why not make the video on it uh, right away so it's a fairly long theoretical struggle in the Rui Lopez we're not going to dwell on the opening moves uh, all that much e4 e5 knight f3 knight to c6 and bishop to b5 so Rui Lopez is on the board we have a6 and bishop to a4 Morphe's defense is on the board also knight f6 and now uh, castles uh, we have bishop to e7 and now d3 so this has been played a million times uh, and when I say a million I mean a lot of times d6 and c3 making room for the light square bishop for when black attacks it uh, and here we have castles by black as well knight bd2 and rook to e8 now making room for the bishop on f8 rook to e1 white also needs to make room for this knight to be uh, remaneuvered and now bishop to f8 and uh, magnus already had this position against uh, firuja in the in this year's uh, tata steel tournament uh, where uh, h3 was played by magnus and Ma magnus was uh, able to win that game uh, sorry by firuja firuja played h3 and magnus uh, won that game however here uh, we have d4 uh, by Nipomnishi, so choosing a different approach, but nothing that we haven't seen before. So b5, pushing the bishop back, bishop to c2, and now e captures on d4. c captures and bishop to g4. So white has a very strong center here, uh, but black uh, has a very solid development. So here, knight to f1. Uh, and g6 now I if the knight comes to g3 then this pawn will very nicely control it so knight to g3 and the bishop is shifted away to g7 uh, bishop to e3 continuing development uh, and now knight to d7 so what do you do here here queen to d2 is a known move it was played only in one game in the database uh, but we have rook to c1 by nepo uh, and it is as of move 16 that we have a completely new game Yes, the, the Rua Lopez is uh, very well analyzed since it's uh, it's one of the first opening that was uh, ever played. So here, uh, well, white has to decide. Uh, sorry, black has to decide. Uh, there's a lot of pressure here on the d4 pawn. And if black uh, wants to do something about that, he needs to give up uh, one of the bishops to, to weaken the d4 square. So here, Magnus captures it. And now, of course, if the queen captures, then you can capture the d4 pawn. So Nepo is forced to mess up his pawn structure, but for now it only strengthens uh, his center. If uh, there's going to be an attack on the king side, uh, then it, it can be considered a weakness. So here Magnus goes in with queen to f6, adds another attacker to the pawn, and Nepo defends it, uh, well, uh, via a small tactic, bishop to b3. Not really a tactic, just saying, okay, if your knight moves, I'm going to capture your c7 pawn. Uh, but this is exactly what Magnus goes for. We have knight captures on d4, bishop captures, queen captures on d4, and now rook captures on c7. So putting pressure on the knight here, uh, and this is what Magnus had in mind. Rook to a7, and now his idea is, okay, if we trade queens, captures, captures, my rook is again nicely defended, uh, nothing to worry about here. So here, after rook a7, Nepo says, nope, we're going to go for rook captures, queen captures, and now queen captures on d6. So we're keeping the queens on the board, and we go into this position where I'm up a pawn and if you if you'd like you can waste the move capturing the b2 pawn uh, which is exactly what Magnus does he grabs the pawn and now uh, if he's able to keep his king safe he should have a very comfortable game uh, but it's uh, you know it, it's a process so here f4 by Nepo not allowing this knight to land on e5 so controlling that square and also you constantly have to be worried about any pawn pushes that might happen so here knight to c5 by Magnus uh, and now comes bishop to d5 adding another defender to the e4 pawn here and here comes bishop to d4 here magnus is threatening a very very nasty tactic for example if nepo isn't careful play something like rook to e2 to add uh, a defender here it's simply uh, sorry this is what nepo played but if you're not careful and play something like h4 without defending the pawn uh, then you run into bishop captures and now white is lost because the the rook is either lost or you capture it and now you get let's say knight captures on e4 check 
black doesn't even have to capture the queen you can also continue and checkmate uh, checkmate white so the queen is coming to f2 doesn't really matter what you play with white check or you're gonna move and now knight captures will be checkmate so here uh rook to e2 the move we uh, originally played and now comes knight to d3 by magnus so a triple attack on the f2 pawn and now king to g2 nepo says okay you're welcome to capture it but it's not gonna come with check and uh, here magnus doesn't go for it uh if you go for it for example knight captures on f2 then you have to worry about uh, you have to worry about a lot of moves uh, you don't have any threats here with black and the move like rook c2 followed by rook c7 uh, will put uh well will put a lot of pressure uh, on black's position so magnus is in no rush to capture this pawn instead he plays king to g7 first uh gets his king to a bit of a safer square now the f7 pawn is not pinned and now rook to d2 uh, puts pressure on the knight and here bishop back to c5 uh, by by magnus forcing nepo to move the queen and uh, therefore lose the f4 pawn so nepo is forced to move the queen here queen to c6 is played and now comes knight captures on f4 this comes with check so king f3 and now uh now rook to d8 here uh, there are uh, a couple of other moves you could play uh, but uh, you need to be careful. Nepo played king to f3 because uh, Carlsen's rook is already hanging. So he played king f3 to also uh, make the knight hanging. And Magnus really needs to figure out what to play here. Uh, bishop to b4 is a very nice idea because uh, you threaten white's rook as well. And then if white captures the rook, black will capture and the knight on f4 is nicely defended while the queen guards the f7 square. But it's a, it's a disgusting position to play. Uh, so here rook to d8 by magnus uh, and now comes king captures on f4 so nepo grabs that uh, grabs that piece uh, and now rook to d6 challenging the queen and here we have queen to e8 and here uh, there is a move for magnus that is pretty much uh, pretty much winning so feel free to pause the video and try to find this idea while i give you a couple of seconds So uh, to those of you who were able to find it, congratulations, as it's not a very easy move to find. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's queen to c7. Now threatening all sorts of nasty discoveries, and it's uh, not at all easy for Nepo to make a move here. Uh, because if you do nothing, then, you know, any check will, will be deadly. You can win the queen, you can win material, you can go for a nice checkmate. The bishop doesn't allow the king to retreat here. So whatever you try, let's say king g4, you're going to run into, let's say, h5 check, king h3, and now rook d8 just traps the queen. So there is no way to avoid both uh, a devastating attack on the king and losing your queen. Or rather, you don't lose the queen, but you have to sacrifice uh, material in order to save it. You're going to have to go for queen captures on f7, and after we have a trade here, captures and captures, you're just going to pick up the rook here. Rook captures and now the bishop will move and you will have a bishop and the rook against the bishop and the knight. Uh, you wrap the exchange and of course you're going to win this endgame very easily. So this is what Carlsen had to play. However, after Nepo's king queen to e8 move, Magnus played bishop captures on f2. And now uh, it also looks very deadly, even deadlier than what I've sh <laughs> just shown you. Queen to e3, a very, very big threat. Uh, however, there is a move for Nepo that's, uh, that uh, allows him to... Uh, to actually come out uh, on top and uh, get, gain a winning advantage so feel free to pause the video and find a winning move for nepo now while i give you a couple of seconds so uh for those of you who were able to do it congratulations on spotting this incredibly difficult move to find and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show eh, no it's not that i'm just tricking you it's actually king to g4 uh, and here uh, now uh, Magnus realized, okay, I cannot go queen to e3 because my queen is needed here guarding the f7 pawn. So how do I continue this? So Magnus played rook to f6. He added another defender here and now he can move the queen. But now Nepo continues uh, well with, with great style. e5. He attacks the rook and you, you need a move here. And it's not all that easy for Nepo's king. Uh, the rook completely cuts him off here. Uh, and he will only uh, be able to go back. So Magnus goes h5 check, king h3, and now rook to f4, saving the rook. Uh, but now, uh, again, with, uh, in great style, e6. And now you're just threatening to win uh, instantly here if you allow this capture. So Magnus forced the capture, captures and captures, and then now comes bishop to d4. You cannot allow uh, rook to d4 check because you're just going to lose the queen. 
So Magnus blocks it with bishop to d4, but now comes a, a, a beautiful finishing move by Nepo. Uh, I'm sure you'll see it. Knight captures on h5. I'm not going to ask you to pause the video because there are a lot of winning moves here. This is just the the most beautiful one. Nepo plays it. Queen ca uh, knight captures on h5. Checks the king, forks the rook, and now if you just move the king. Uh, you, you, you're gonna lose the rook uh, or even get checkmated very quickly. So Magnus captured it, uh, but now comes rook to g2. The knight sacrifice was in order to open up the g file for the white rook. King to f6, and now comes rook to g6 with check. King e5, and bishop to b3, a beautiful discovered check uh, by by Nepo, and it was in this position on move 40 that Magnus Carlsen resigned the game because he's getting checkmated either in one or two moves. If king f5, uh, then queen to e6 is checkmate, and if you try the other one, uh, you could also block with the queen, which doesn't really make sense, uh, then white will just capture it, and that's just it. King f5, and we get the exact same checkmate. Uh, so those are uh, uh, Carlsen's only options and uh, a beautiful win for Yanni Pomnici in round one of the second match. So he's one step closer to tying the match and then forcing playoffs. Uh, we'll see if uh, if Magnus can come back in this match or will we see uh, some, some very uh, nice playoffs, some very nice blitz games and then maybe even Armageddon. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, epic stuff by, by Nepo. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Thomas Sharp, uh, Patrick Wetter, uh, Stefan Miller, uh, Finn Chibitz, and uh, Grant Miller for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon continuing the coverage uh, of this very nice tournament, checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and uh, have an excellent rest of your weekend.